And now it's time for an afternoon of sporting action. Trev Ryder introduces Grandstand. afternoon welcome to grandstand we're getting going for the new premiership season that may be the buzz especially with the football league underway but here on grandstand we're taking things on four legs we've got racing today coming to you live from newbury we've got three feature races including the uh, master you can see that with us here exclusively this afternoon on grandstand Show jumping featuring the Derby Meeting Speed Classic coming from Hickstead in Ireland. Captain John Leddingham defends his title that he's won for the last two years. Let me make it a hand trick. Golf today is from the Volvo PGA Championships. Mick Faldo is out to defend. He's at Wentworth Club and will be there to bring you all the action this afternoon. So very shortly after this, we'll be going over to Trevor Lineker for Football Focus. And then, of course, we'll break for the news. Cricket Focus, we will look at what's happening in the county circuits and adds to the next test match between England and Pakistan. Then we'll mix it between show jumping and racing and golf all afternoon. And then we'll close it off at 4.45 with final score in which we'll give you all the results that have taken place inside the first division uh, throughout the season. We will, however, keep the Premiership results back. You can see those on Match of the Day. But first here on Grandstand, it's time to go over to Trevor Lineker and a preview of the new Premiership season ahead of us in Football Focus. Hello and welcome to Football Focus. We're here today. We're going to be previewing the Premiership season, the Football League season, the Champions League season, the FA Cup season, the 1996-97 season. And this is what we've got for you coming up on the programme. We'll be sitting down with the champions. Defending the double this season, Manchester United are the bookies' favourites to once again win the Premiership. A mixture of youth and experience drove them to the title, Prove that you certainly can win something with kids. And we'll be hearing from their manager, Alex Ferguson, talks to us here this afternoon at Focus about the key to his side's success over the past four years. We'll look at Manchester United's rivals. Does £15 million buy you the Premiership? Can Liverpool finally get their act together and challenge for the title again? Or will the bookies' dark horses Arsenal prove to surprise everyone? And we'll tell you where you can watch everything this season. A full breakdown of sports on the box here on Trevor Sports. From satellite television to commercial television. And here at Auntie we'll show you where you can watch everything. And of course we will bring you exclusive highlights of the charity shields that took place at Wembley between Manchester United and Newcastle. Cracking match this. And we'll also be looking ahead to the Football League season to see who can win the race for promotion to get back to the Premiership. Uh, alongside me to give us all his views today, of course. And a very warm welcome here on Trevor Sports to Trev Lawrenson, who will be with us this afternoon at Focus. But first of all, let's go ahead and look to the double champions. Manchester United defending the FA Cup and the Premier League this season. The bookie's favourite, Trevor Gaskell, reports on Manchester United's chances this season. 
They say the key to a team is strong spine, and that's certainly what Manchester United have. A mixture of youth and experience made them an exciting project. But Alex Ferguson's summer spending spree, allowing him to bring in five new players and some stars of Euro 96, certainly with a proposition of what's now being called the Class of 92, is making Manchester United a real prospect in this year's Premiership. Ryan Giggs will continue to play a key role, as will Roy Keane be. Man of the match in the FA Cup final and could be key to Manchester United's midfield this season. Eric Cantona continues to main the charismatic enigma that he is that drives on, keeps Manchester United going, all guarded by the Great Dane. For them, it could be a key season in Europe as well as at home. Alex Ferguson was all calms in the cliff as they went ahead and set themselves up for the season. Peter Schmeichel and Eric Cantona are greeting the boss as Manchester United look to get set for a season in which they could potentially be fighting on four fronts. With the removal of the Bosman rule in, in introduction, Alex Ferguson's side know that they can field a full-strength side in Europe. So David Beckham may be able to play along the sites of Cantona and Keane and company. In training, it was very much a, a relaxed atmosphere as Manchester United got themselves set for for the season and Alex Ferguson was full of confidence knowing that this side were going to go for something truly unique. At a recent press conference Alex Ferguson sat down and explained the difference that Manchester United and the charismatic enigma known as Eric Cantona has made to the side over the past four years. When Cantona joined us they came to me then this first day and he says um, can I have two players? I says what for? He says, to practice. I said, oh, of course. And I went up to Eric Harrison, and he was away, about 100 yards away, and I shouted, Eric, Eric. And eventually he hears me, he says, um, what is that? I said, send me two players. He said, what for? I said, practice is a stupid bugger. What do you think of that? <laughs> so he sent the players down. We got a goalkeeper. And there he goes for half an hour, practicing boys. Finishing. And I says to Kiddo, I says, this is management. Just watch him. This is great. And of course, the jungle drums were beaten back at the training ground because there is a, there is a part, this is, this is a part I'm trying to get with the environment at the point that I should have maybe made earlier, to create that environment where players are really striving. They're prepared to persevere, to get to the very, very top. The very, very top. The Cantona level. You understand? And it's practice. You know, playing a game of football, by the way, doesn't make you a player. That's all evidence. No question about it, practice makes a player. You remember that. Practice makes a player. And the next day, they're hanging around that training ground at the end of the training session, you know, kidding on they're not interested and dying to join in which was fantastic to see. And it is definitely a good part of the Manchester United present day, the practice at the end of the sessions. The practice makes permanent at Manchester United. Cantona could be the key for United's season that very much hinges on what the Manchester United number seven could give to them this season and in Europe. Well, fascinating interview, Trevor. I want to get your insight into what Alex Ferguson was talking about Eric Cantona, who really has been the catalyst for their success. Yeah, I, it's interesting because, you know, days at Liverpool when we were practising. Um, yes, we would, but to that extent, once training was over, that was it. You were done. You were out. There was no extra or so forth. And you can see that drive and determination. And I've always thought last season... Manchester United just had the ability to show up and had that drive at every game last season. I didn't see that so much from some of their rivals and I think that's what set them apart and enabled them to uh, uh, be successful in the end. Well, we talked about Manchester United's success on the domestic front. What about the European? After the summer's Bosman ruling, there is no foreigner cap, so to speak, on how many players are in. Manchester United can get a uh, full squad out there. And Alex Ferguson's take advantage with five big signings, all of a European nature, in the summer. Where do you see their chances in the uh, Champions League? Um, well, look, they, for me, they always looked three or four players short. What was the foreign all taking effect? Uh, but they've also got to learn and understand they've never got out the group stages of this competition. Um, 
rumour has it from UEFA. This is the last season. You have to be the champion to play. They're looking to expand this competition next season. So the potential is second place in the Premiership gets you Champions League football, which is a strange concept to think. The European Cup is for the uh, league champions of, of every single league. What it does, though, for Manchester United is if they can get past the group stage, they can get a result against Juventus and get out the others. I don't see them winning that group, mind you. If they do, can do that, and then they can go and march on, then they've got a real chance, I think, uh, this season of uh, doing well. But I think there are better teams, better experienced sides uh, that might uh, um, force Manchester United to come unstuck against. Well, there's uh, Manchester United and Alex Ferguson's uh, thrive. But what about the rivals that we've got ahead uh, for this season? Uh, it's been said that uh, Alan Shearer, the £50 million man, the world record signing for Newcastle United, talk of him potentially going to Manchester United at one point. Is it enough for them to challenge for the Premiership? Reporting for us here is Trevor Sinstad. Newcastle United's 12-point lead slipping to them was definitely a sore subject, but £15 million can certainly ease the pain. Alan Shearer is involved and then it could be a season in which Newcastle United look to be Manchester United's main challengers for this year's Premiership title. Alan Shearer himself will be hoping to get off the mark, but the partnership that he could form with Les Ferdinand, many people have said, is mouth-watering prospects, certainly. And the two linked up well in pre-season. But it's in defence that Newcastle United will be worried. Pavel Cernicek was exposed far too many times as Newcastle threw away too many clear cut opportunities. They do have some moments of brilliance in the team. Festino Esprit's magical touch is certainly one to be admired. But it'll be Alan Shearer that'll be hoping that he makes the X Factor. A move from Blackburn showing his ambitions. And Newcastle United may be thinking this is their opportunity to challenge Manchester United and get revenge after last season's capitulation. In other challengers, there's Liverpool, who have in them perhaps the best pure centre forwards that there is in the game. Robbie Fowler, or God as he's known uh, uh, on the cop, is a striker to be feared up and down the breadth of the country. Partnered by Stan Collymore, who himself has moments of absolute brilliance in his game, Liverpool themselves could continue to be a form to be reckoned with. However, again, it's in defensive areas you'd have to ask questions. David James' mistake in the cup final costing them and giving Manchester United the chance or here, but a bit of Cantona brilliance to win the double. But if that's sorted, and the same times they can keep their own players who have moments of brilliance in them, like Steve McManaman, who had a fantastic Euro 96, it's certainly to say that Liverpool could be within a shout. At Highbury, it was all shocks with Bruce Rioch sacking in the summer and with Tony Adams taking time out of the game to deal with alcohol issues, all of which we here at Football Focus wish him all the best in his recovery. For Arsenal, it could be a mixed bag to the season. Rumours of moving as far as Japan to find a captain to steer the ship, although Arsenal's creative outlet in Dennis Burkamp looks to be a key factor in their season. Burkamp's ability to link the whole front forward lineup looks to be key. In pre-season especially, he was instrumental. And Paul Merson, again another player dealing with alcohol and gambling issues, showing us just what he can do when linking up with the Dutchman. But for Arsenal, it's simple. The one player they've got to keep fit to be in a shout of the championship is going to be Ian Wright. His ability to finish when given chances is second to none. Perhaps one of the most pure natural finishers that there is in the Premiership. If Ian Wright's healthy, then it could be all right for Arsenal as challengers this season. It could potentially be a four-way ra race for the league championship this year. Wouldn't that be something? Well, there is the uh, talk of the rivals. Trevor, back to yourself here. Where do you see uh, this looking for this season between um, uh, the, the, the top four, so to speak, if we like going for it? Well, I think Newcastle United last season, goals was not a problem for them. Defensively, it was. You you no doubt you're going to get 20, 30 extra goals a season with Alan Shearer. And if they're going to go down there, well, defensively, there are questions. But let's look at our attack and make that even better. It's a bold statement from Kevin Keegan and his side can do that. I thought last season Newcastle United needed to shut out games. They needed to stop teams playing. They needed to take some clever points and didn't. And threw too many opportunities away. I would have liked to have seen them. I mean, yes, they've signed David Batty uh, from Blackburn Rovers. That's going to give them some stability in midfield. 
I would have loved to have seen a top class centre half just to stable that back four and really, really help them this season. As for Liverpool, uh, it's a good side, but it's inconsistent. And they've got to find the consistency against the, the so-called lesser opposition, the sort of your mid to relegation uh, uh, contenders in the Premiership. Uh, if Roy Evans can get that side motivated enough, and I think that's possibly the key, then they could do so. Uh, they've got uh, John Barnes in the side. He knows what it is to uh, uh, win uh, the championship. And if it, they can get his experience to flow through these youngsters and they cannot believe their own hype, that's half a chance for them. Uh, and what about Arsenal, Trevor? I want to get your, your uh, uh, thoughts on them this season. Sacking a Bruce Rierke in the summer. Uh, Rumours of a potential uh, 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 coach from Japan arriving uh, later on. Where do you see them? Well, they've got some good signings. Uh, it's just a case of can Arsenal find the consistency. Um, I ha they have proven quality in their back four. You know, Adams, Bold, uh, Dixon, Winterber. No doubts about that. Uh, the midfield getting David Platt. Uh, he had an OK European Championships. Uh, is he the player of three, four years ago that signed for Bari and Sampdoria? No. He's lost half a step, I would say. Uh, but this young lad, Patrick Vieira, I think uh, uh, could be key for them. Uh, I think if Burkamp and Wright can, good, can drive a good partnership together, Arsenal have got all the chance uh, in the world um, of doing well there. Well, that's uh, uh, looking ahead to the rivals. Uh, what about where we'll be watching uh, television this season? Well, uh, the football championship itself uh, is always broken up among the various TV broadcasters. And here... On uh, Focus, we'll give you a quick rundown of where you can watch everything. We'll start, of course, with the Premiership. So in the Premiership today, we'll let you know that, uh, depending on what week happens, you can see highlights of two games, plus all the other goals in Match of the Day. If you want to go watch Satellite Television, they'll have you highlights on their Super Sunday, Monday Night Football, or Football Special Shows. You can see those uh, throughout the season. As for uh, the First Division... Well, that's uh, going to be split between Fridays and Sundays, uh, and you'll see most of those on Sky. Uh, there will be the odd game that uh, happens on ITV in a regional format with their match show. Uh, the FA Cup, that's going to be here on um, uh, uh, Match of the Day. Highlights of the third, fifth and semi-finals will all be on Match of the Day. The final will be exclusively live on Grandstand and uh, Sky Sports. They've got highlights of the fourth round and the quarterfinals. So you'll be able to see those from there. In European football terms, the Champions League is an ITV exclusive. Highlights on every round and the final will be live through them. That final will be in Munich this year. You can see that. At the UEFA Cup, well, that's going to be our exclusive European football here on the BBC Sports Night. It's back for another season with highlights in each run and the final. Occasionally, the odd bit of UEFA Cup football you'll be able to see here on Focus. In terms of England internationals for this season, uh, where we got highlights, all the home qualifiers will be here on the Beeb. We'll have Match of the Day and Sports Night to cover those. Uh, the away games, where well, they're going to be uh, highlights of those, will be on Sky, so you can see uh, access to all of those for this season. Well, before we go ahead and uh, uh, go with Trev's uh, prediction for the season, there was a, a game of football played recently. The charity shield between Newcastle and Manchester United. Commentary from this one comes from Trev Motts. Who just three weeks ago, a month ago, hosted the finals of Euro 96. And the Newcastle fans and United fans are absolutely buoyant with the start of a new season. The top two collide. Keegan against Ferguson. Will Keegan get his revenge at Wembley today? Well, let's take a check on the two teams and a couple of notable new faces signed from both from Blackburn Rovers. One is David Batty in the midfield there. He'll play alongside Rob Lee in that uh, central midfield. And Alan Shearer signed for £15 million pounds will partner Les Ferdinand in attack. Tino Asprilia has to make do with the substitutes. As for Manchester United, they've just got a striker of their own alongside Eric Cantona there. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer signed for three times less the price than Shearer was from Mulder. Raymond van der Gaal makes his debut in place of Peter Schmeichel who's picked up a knock. And Nicky Brock comes in for Roy Keane who has also picked up a knock and will not play today. So we're all set for the start of the curtain raiser. Keegan against Ferguson, United against Newcastle. 
as I take the tunnel end away to my right hand side. And those famous black and white stripes, United in the red. This is Nicky Buck picking it up. Solskjaer, nice little touch there for Cantona. And now scores, plenty of room here to have a go because the Newcastle defence had backed off and a terrific save by Pavel Senecek. Lovely play again for Manchester United, three them through the lines and this is how Alec Ferguson really wants them to play. Really good, really good one touch football really that uh, gets the crowd on the seat and it's going to be a corner now to Manchester United with David Beckham they say he's a future England captain in the making here, this fella, Beckham as the ball comes in there, Cantona, and he's off the crossbar, and Newcastle get it away, Beckham with a super cross, Cantona's header, and I'm not certain whether Cernicek got a hand on that, or whether he came off the crossbar, but regardless, Newcastle have got off lucky. Giggs, Scholes, he'll get there first, Cantona, all united in this opening quarter of an hour, Irwin, Oh, now it's going to reverse pass from left to right flank. Beckham took it nicely on the chest. But he's there, offering support. So too is Scholes, and Scholes will hit it. And he's gone, and he's gone in. My goodness, it's the same set of check there. They seem to, anyway, from where we were sitting. But Paul Scholes has given Manchester United a lead with 17 minutes of this community, this charity shield rather gone. Well... Well, he will know what happened there, the Newcastle goalkeeper. There it is again, Beckham taking it down, feeding butt, and scores for, I'll have a go with me right foot here. And it deceived, whether he took a deflection or not, I'm not quite certain, but uh, hopefully we'll get a better angle to see whether it did deflect or not. I'm not sure inside the goal, we'll see the goal again from inside the goal, but Scholes gets United the lead, and that's all that matters. past the halfway mark of the first half 1-0 to United it's all been United though here at Wembley today Let's see if Newcastle can start building something now with Peter Beard to David Batty the new man in midfield signed of course from Blackburn Rovers and here's Ferdinand lovely little nodded down and a chance for Chira who pulls it wide wonderful opportunity this for Newcastle Lee and Betty doing well in the midfield. A lovely flick on there by Ferdinand and Shearer just wide of Van der Gaal's post. Now Beckham. It's a good game, this one, this Charity Shield game. And there's still 10 minutes of this brilliant first half to go. Here's Ryan Giggs. But in acres of space there. Here's Scholes. Dennis Irwin, the left back. Winking up well with Giggs. Back to Irwin. Wonderful football this from Manchester United. And there's a foul there on Irwin. Free kick. Taken quickly. Giggs to Irwin. Irwin spreading a lovely ball out to the right hand side to David Beckham. Now Butt. Plenty of space for him. And that's a foul. That's going to be a free kick to Manchester United without any doubt at all. The referee coin Bobby, I think, across for a little chat. No more sun. Otherwise, it's a free kick. So, Manchester United looking for this uh, breakthrough now. As uh, Beckham strikes it and it's got a deflection off the wall there. And Paul Durkin, I think, says corner there, the referee. Paul Durkin of Dorset, the referee today, says corner. And it's going to be Beckham to take. Four, five in the on the edge of the area. It comes the corner towards Scholes. Cantona is up there too. Scholes with a volley and a terrific save from Sanacek. And Paul Durkin, the referee, singles another corner. But here it is again. There's the corner. And Scholes with a smashing volley. And Newcastle were not expecting that. That's for sure. But Sanacek had other ideas and kept the volley out. It would have been a super goal if he had, if he had got in. So the check, as I say, had other ideas. So another corner then. Will they work it again or will they go a bit more direct approach? Go take the more direct approach this time. Maybe they'll go for a short one. Yes, Beckham to Nicky Butt. Beckham on the other lap. Butt decides to play it again towards Cantona and it's wide. 
Well, that should have been 2-0 there. Burks did magnificently well from the cross. And Cantona should have scored. And he knows it. Scholes. They go to Solskjaer. Going away to David Baddy now. Newcastle, rare chance for them to attack. They've only had one attack in the whole half. Can they find something now with Robert Lee? Beardsley just to the right there. Played into Batty. Played into Shearer. Ferdinand's there. And Batty's there too. And it's 1 1. And David Batty, who's not renowned for his goal scoring, has just put Newcastle in the, uh, back in level terms. And you have to say, that's come rather against the run of the play, but the two army will not care one shot about that. David Batty makes it 1 1, and a super slick move from Newcastle there. It's taken them something like 41 minutes to really make sure that their good passing, good quality passing really comes to the surface. A good play there. Sheer remaining on. Batty making an intelligent run. And it just did enough to get under Van der Gaal and into the back of the net and make it 1 1. Almost got in Ferdinand's way there, Batty, but uh, when he storms through like a boy in a china shop, he will not be denied. And 1 1 it is, right on the stroke of half time. There's Nicky Butt. More skulls to Cantona. Beckham on the right. Nicky Butt again. Beckham again. Tease John Bursman this time. Beckham still holding on to the ball. There's still four in red waiting in the penalty box. Here's uh, Paul Scholes now. Dennis Irwin. Cantona. But Solskjaer is in there. And a chance for Solskjaer. Oh, a tremendous goal! And on his full debut. Oh, he's going to Solskjaer the three and a half million pound man from Mulder has put Manchester United into the lead and has upstaged the £15 million man in doing so. Van der Gaal, the reserve keeper at the other end, in for Schmeichel today, applause that to the balls the United fans. And United are back in front for a second time today in the Charity Shield. And it was a wonderful move again. Patience was the virtual in this build up here. And Solskjaer with a really good finish and this is what Ferguson has signed him for. For finishes like that, he was doing that for Mulder last season, and he took it away from Scholes, turned nicely, and just from inside the area beats Pavel Serdicek, and Solskjaer off the mark on his debut for Manchester United. Two one. Robert Lee. Now Ginola towards Shearer. And the 15 million pound man does not have too much to feed off. He might get something here. He's got Lee waiting in the middle. The ball pulled back. Lee, 2-2. Two, two. two goals in as many minutes. And Newcastle are back in it. Oh, it's turning into a classic. This charity shield now. Robert Lee. Fantastic goal. And we've not really seen too much of that from Newcastle really this afternoon. But... Well, they've not lied down at all this afternoon when they've gone behind. They've always seen at any point to get themselves back level. And here again is no exception. Alan Shearer with two assists now. One for David Batty in the first half. One for Robert Lee in the second half. And Newcastle twice behind, but now twice level. And the scoreline is 2-2. been a terrific watch and we've still got half an hour of this to go and it could turn one way or the other and Ferdinand's away now down the far side brings in Warren Barton Barton with the cross and it gets a deflection and Paul Durkin says corner so another opportunity now for Newcastle United short to Gillespie so Gillespie, Rob Lee Batty Beresford, Rubbly again, Lee with a shot and a good save from Van der Gaal, although I must, I must say I think it was probably going wide in any case, but Van der Gaal I suppose didn't, wasn't going to know about that, 
I think it was just drifting wide and running out again, as I say, wasn't to know it. Robert Lee. And then Shearer. Well, he could do it a goal really today to assist to his name. There's Shearer. And an easy save for Van der Gaal, who boots it straight down the field now, looking for Cantona, who flicks it on nicely here. Palace is forward, and Solskjaer is in there too. Palace is still forward. And now he's got to get back because Newcastle have possession, but Ginnelman making a complete hoax of that. Straight to Beckham. What was he thinking of there, the Frenchman? The ball played in there towards another Frenchman, Cantona. The fist away by the keeper, Sidacek. And here's Skulls to Irwin. To Skulls again, Pallister. And still, Gary Pallister. Oh. Well, where did that run come from, from Gary Pallister? He started the move, which, and he stayed forward here after Sidacek had made a bit of a meal of punching it. And then in the end, his shot goes well wide in the end, but where did that rope come from? In fact, it got a deflection, so a corner kick to be taken by Beckham. Still 2-2, 67 minutes gone here in the Charity Shield game at Wembley. Beckham's corner towards Irwin. Oh, Solskjaer is in there. He might drop for Solskjaer. Scholes was in there. Comes to Irwin. Bit of a crowd scene there. Butt is in there. Solskjaer's in there too! 3-2! Solskjaer with a brace for United! This is turning into a classic Charity Shield game now. And Solskjaer, the man from Mulder, has got two goals for United. And it's their third. And Sinicek, beaten three times, has a drink. Cannot quite believe what has just happened here. Newcastle made a complete hawk to try to clear this. It was all the crowd seen, but played it in, and they didn't trap Solskjaer offside. They played him on, at least two of them did. And Solskjaer, this is what he's playing for here in his world today. He's trying to stay offside and catch defenders out. And he did just that to the ladder. 3-2 to Manchester United in a real classic. Sotino Australia on for Ferdinand. Clark on for Genoa. Newcastle looking with two minutes to go as Ronnie Woolworth comes in and Cantona was had her and just over the top. I think Sidacek might have got something on it, I'm not quite sure, but uh, here it is again. Look at the space there for Giggs to cross and Cantona just headed it onto the roof. The final whistle, Manchester United take the first trophy of the season to add to the League and Cup double, double they won last season. Defeat again for Newcastle and Kevin Keegan, but I'm sure when the league season kicks off, they will be challenging right at the top end, along with Manchester United, especially with Alan Shearer in their ranks. It's, it's another new striker that's really shown Shearer up today. So shy with a brace that wins Manchester United the shield as Eric Cantona lifts it high to the sky. Manchester United win the Community Shield, or win the Charity Shield rather, by three goals to two. A terrific final. And the first row of the season has been landed by Alex Ferguson's men. Newcastle will come again. They look shattered now, but come next Saturday, they will be up and ready to go in the Premier League, in the Premiership. But uh, it's Manchester United who, go, who will go to Wimbledon next, se next week, full of confidence and full of vigour. Spare for Ferdinand and Shearer, delight for Cantona and his troops. So there is the portal that you'll see in your morning papers tomorrow. Manchester United are the winners of the Charity Shield for 1996. Winners today in a terrific game over Newcastle by three goals to two. Trevor, it's an excellent game, wasn't it, at Wembley? And it certainly sets the soul for this season that we really could uh, uh, have a classic uh, uh, championship, couldn't we? Absolutely, I really, I really am looking forward. Very excited for what, what's uh, uh, possible at the moment. It could be a really, really, really uh, good season. Well, looking ahead, uh, let's go ahead and look at your predictions for this season. And this is they are. Talk us through them, Trevor. Well, um, for the Premiership, I've gone Manchester United. Uh, I see the I see the other teams probably driving them closer. It could be a four-way race for the Championship that could be great. Just think Alex Ferguson, providing they're not too distracted by Europe, could be enough. In terms of Europe, I think Juventus, the Champions League, is theirs to retain. Um, looked at some of the other sides. Uh, Porto would be another one that I would put right up there. 
I'd have Manchester United in that conversation, but I think Juventus are there. I think the FA Cup could be Liverpool's. That could be a great competition for them to get things together and to get that championship move in. A bit of belief of the silverware among this squad can keep them going. Uh, the League Cup and uh, uh, teams uh, top times resting. Um, I look at Brian Robson's Middlesbrough, and I think that's a key side that could do really, really well in that competition. The UEFA Cup, it's hard to look beyond Bobby Robson's Barcelona and their new signing, Ronaldo, taking that competition uh, by storm, even though that we've got four English clubs in that. In terms of where I think uh, sides to be relegated, I'm probably looking towards the three promoted sides. I think they're the ones in trouble, Leicester, Derby and Sunderland. When I look at what's available in the Football League, my pick um, to get promoted, Manchester City, Bolton, I think I've got the two strongest teams potentially, and I probably fancy Wolves uh, to go and get through via the playoffs. Uh, but that's my prediction for the season. So in terms of the uh, Football League, uh, there was one game played last night. Manchester City uh, made their debut in the uh, fir- the old First Division now, as it is, during two all in the end with Ipswich Town and getting that off and run. Uh, we will go and preview all the results later on today in the uh, uh, Football League later on today on Final Score. Well, that's uh, it for the first uh, folk of the season and the preview that uh, we've got uh, launching up for you. There's lots of fantastic action to come here as uh, August 1996 looks a little bit like August 2023, just 27 years and back to the future. But from all of us here at Focus, we'll see you again soon. Well, there we go. Uh, Trevor Lineker with focus and the predictions for what could be a fascinating premiership season. We're here on Grandstand. We're going back to an afternoon of horse racing, show jumping and golf. But before we do, time to join Trevor Burke for the news. Good evening. Prime Minister John Major today later announced that he will be go ahead and banning. the. Well, wonderful action as always. So uh, now it's time for us to go and uh, uh, go around the grounds and Let's join uh, Trevor Gudgeon uh, for all the full-time results in the Football League with final score. Nationwide First Division. Manchester City 2, Ipswich 2 game played last evening. Bradford City 3, Portsmouth 1. Grimsby Town 1, Wolves 3. Huddersfield Town 2, Charlton Athletic 0. Norwich City 2, Swindon Town 0. Oldham Athletic 1, Stoke City 2. 2. Port Vale 1. Bolton Wanderers 1. Queen's Park Rangers 2. Oxford United 1. Reading 1. Sheffield United 0. Southend United 1. Tranmere Rovers 1. West Bromwich Albion 1. Barnsley 2. Birmingham City 1. Crystal Palace 0. In terms of what that does for the first division, Bradford City uh, lead the way. Uh, wins for the t- top nine sides. Um, not a high amount of goal difference to get things going. As for the bottom half of the table, well, don't read too much into it at the moment. Uh, a long way to go in this season so far. As for the Premiership, highlights will be with Trev Lynham and uh, the guys for uh, Match of the Day. Join us Saturday, 10.30pm for that. Well, there we go. What a lovely afternoon of sporting action that we have had for you here on Grandstand. We're getting set for the Premiership season. We hope that you'll be here to enjoy it all with us. From all of us, though, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Um.